Lately, there's been a lot of hype around Wolverine, with X-Men 97, Deadpool and Wolverine, and the Wolverine game coming out next year. It's safe to say that Wolverine fans are definitely eating good. And with all this new hype around them, I thought it'd be nice to take a look back at every single game star in Wolverine. Now, for this video, I really only want to include games where it's just Wolverine, so none of the X-Men games are going to make this list. But with that being said, let's start from the beginning. The very first game starring Wolverine was on the NES, and graphically this is one of the better looking NES games. I feel like they put a lot of love into this one. Everything from the backgrounds to the little cutscenes that are spread throughout the game all look really good, but this is an NES game, which means it's also very hard and the combat doesn't really hold up well. But for what it is, it is a good game. The game plays more like a platform than anything else. After a while I didn't even really bother with combat anymore, and to be fair, at some levels, you really can't. Like this one. There's so many falling platforms, things being thrown at you that all you really can do is run. After 8 levels of running and jumping through ninjas, astronauts, and bubbles, because for some reason Wolverine's weakness in this game is bubbles, we finally make it to Magneto, and this is the fight. Just this, over and over again, until he eventually runs away and the level ends. And then we make it to the actual final boss, Sabretooth. We went at this for like a good 5 minutes till I realized he wasn't taking any damage. This boss fight was brutal. I honestly ended up cheating just so I could see the ending. I realized after a while that to beat him you have to get him off the edge of this cliff, which seems really easy but even with the cheats I struggled with this. I used the rewind feature on my emulator. I mean my legally obtained Nintendo Entertainment System that I definitely bought from the store because I know how much Nintendo doesn't like people emulating their games that can no longer be bought. But even with this feature, I still couldn't get him past the edge. He always managed to find a way to get back to the beginning. For a while, I was actually thinking that this boss might just be unbeatable, but after almost two hours, I finally managed to do it. And what was the reward for that? That's it. Hours of grinding to get here for this. Would I ever play this game again? Definitely not. But like I said, for what it is and the time that it was made, it's not bad. Wolverine. Wolverine. Next up is Wolverine Adamantium Rage for the Super Nintendo. I had really high hopes for this one. Just like Wolverine from the NES, when you turn it on, you have this really cool title screen. And when the game starts, everything just looks beautiful. Problem is, that's the only good thing about this game. It feels like all the work to went into making this game look pretty, which is a shame because this game has so many cool ideas, it just doesn't do any of them properly. They introduce the ability to regain health and wall climb, which is really cool when it actually works. I don't know if it's maybe because of how I'm running the game, but sometimes inputs just don't register. There were times when I tried to wall climb and he just wouldn't, or like here. I mashed the attack button to do an aerial attack, and the game just doesn't register for some reason. The combat platform is already stiff as is, and it just makes the game a lot harder than it needs to be. I feel like I spent more time fighting with the controls than I did actually playing the game. And then there's the terrible level design. From what I played, each level pretty much plays the same way. At the bottom of the screen there's an enemy counter, and pretty much all you have to do is kill the amount of enemies until the counter reaches zero. Do this for a few levels, boss fight, and then repeat the process all over again. There were a few times where I missed an enemy or two, so I'd have to backtrack on the entire map just to find them so I can move on. And even then, when I would find them, the game does a terrible job of showing you where to go or telling you what to do next. I couldn't even really progress without watching a video, like this level. I defeat the enemies, but I'm still not able to progress. I literally searched the map for like 15 minutes because I thought I missed something, but when I looked it up, it said I had to break this green box. This is something that I don't think I would have figured out, especially since when you do hit it, there's no kind of impact, and the game doesn't even tell you that's what you're supposed to do. And the same thing happens with the next level. After you beat the next boss, which by the way is honestly the coolest part about this game, instead of there being phases, there's three different boss fights in one, and each one has their own attacks. It's honestly a huge step up from the first boss, which is just this. And even though the combat in this game is god awful, unlike the first boss in the boss in Wolverine NES, I actually did enjoy this boss fight. But anyways, after beating these guys you move on to the next level and you're brought into this tiny room and again there's just no direction or anything, it's just this tiny room. Now when you get into this room you're just expected to know what to do. Again after trying to figure it out on my own I had to look it up and this was the solution. 
Before this, I didn't even know that you could claw your way down in the places. The game doesn't tell you that, and there's nothing here to indicate that that's what you're supposed to do. A while back, I saw this debate going on about yellow paint in video games, where people were saying that markers like the yellow paint in Resident Evil 4 make games less immersive. I think it's a subtle way of telling the player where to go without actually telling them what to do. A lot of people try to argue that this is bad and it kind of babies the player. I just want to say that that debate makes absolutely no sense. This has been a thing in video games since the start of video games, and has something like that been here, whether it was paint or even just making the area shiny, let me know that I had to interact with something there. That would have been fine, but there was nothing. And with that, I gave up. Yeah, this game is really bad. One positive though is that the game has some of the best time my music I've ever heard in a video game. What is this song? Next up is Wolverine's Rage for the Game Boy Color. Of all the 2D games on the list, this one was easily my favorite. This was a lot more thought out than the other ones, which honestly isn't really saying much, considering I don't think any of those put in Adamantium Rage. But just like Wolverine NES, this game's also more of a platformer. Instead of having to kill a certain amount of enemies before being able to finish, you just have to make it to the end of the stage before the timer runs out. There being a timer is such a small thing, but it makes a huge difference. I felt like you regained health a little too fast in Adamantium Rage. Whenever I lost even a little bit of health, I would just run away and stand still for a few seconds. You can't really do that though in Wolverine's Rage because of the timer, and I kind of like that. The health regeneration has a really nice balance to where you're not healing too much to make the game too easy, but you also can't sit around every time you're almost dead because of the timer. It really encourages you to keep on moving, while also being careful with how you play. Even the combat was a lot more thought out in this one. I sometimes still had that issue from Adamantium Rage where moves that look like they should have connected just don't, or moves feel like they have no impact, but combat was still a thousand times better in this one. They added a parry mechanic where if you attack at the same time as an enemy, you'll deflect the attack, and this was so much fun to pull off. Everything from the level design to how much the platforming feels was improved so much, I just wish this game was a lot longer. I finished it in about an hour and a half, and I just wanted to keep on playing. The game was so much fun from start to finish, but with that, let's see how the last 2D game holds up. While I did like Wolverine's Rage a lot more than this one, from a gameplay perspective this game is a lot better than all the other titles we talked about. I reference Adamantium Rage a lot because even though the game was the worst Super Nintendo game I've ever played, it does have a lot of great ideas and I feel like that game set the groundwork for this one. This is a game that Adamantium Rage should have been. It even fixes the problem that I had with Wolverine's Rage with moves not connecting when they look like they should have. Even though I still prefer the combat in Wolverine's Rage just because pairing was so much fun, I'd be lying if I said it was better. It's actually kind of crazy just how much this game expands on the other games, just so much variety here. With all the other games, just one goal. Wolverine NES, make it to the other side of the map. Adamantium Rage, get the number of enemies on the screen, then repeat. Wolverine's Rage, make it to the end of the level before the timer runs out. But in this one, there's puzzles, chase scenes where you have to follow Sabretooth while trying not to get too close or too far from him. And there's even stealth missions, which I didn't think would work well on a 2D platformer, but it was surprisingly not that bad. Now, too many things going on can sometimes be a bad thing. I feel like a lot of games will just throw in a bunch of random mechanics and missions just for the sake of having them, but this game handles them really well. These missions, like the Sabretooth ones, don't happen too often. They're just sprinkled in to give the game a little bit more variety on top of what's already there. And what's already there is really good. On top of all the different mission types too, they also decided to throw in a bunch of new mechanics, like the ability to retract your claws. With your claws out, you deal a bit more damage and attacks have more range, as well as the ability to wall climb. They also added a rage meter that fills when your claws are out. Once the meter fills all the way, you're automatically put into this rage mode, but afterwards you're for a few seconds. You can let the meter go down by attacking with their fist for less damage, and while I would have preferred a button that I could have pressed just so I can activate rage whenever I wanted to, I personally didn't mind how it worked in this game. Having to manage that meter so I don't get stunned at the wrong time was honestly kind of fun, but that's something I feel like a lot of people might not like, and I honestly kind of understand why. I don't really have that many negative things to say about this one. It's a combination of what made all the other 2D games so great, and I think that's just the best way to leave it. X-Men Origins for the Nintendo DS was the last 2D game starring Wolverine. I heard so many good things about the console version of Origins, and there was so much improvement between all the 2D games that I was so excited to play this one, but unfortunately I couldn't. I emulated it on my PC and got to play the first level, which was a boss fight, but after the boss fight I needed to use the touchscreen to progress, and I couldn't figure out how to get that working on my emulator. I'm not sure how much of this game I need the touchscreen for, but even if I could get it working, I feel like it's also not really fair to review the game without getting the full experience, so unfortunately, I won't be able to talk about this one, but based off some of the reviews I've seen, that might not have been a bad thing. I had no idea this game even existed until this video, but when I found out, I was so excited. Growing up, the GameCube was and still is one of my favorite consoles. The GameCube was a gold mine for these superhero games, and while some of these games were just god awful, I enjoyed the majority of them, which why I was surprised I never heard of this one. Mark Hamill voices Wolverine, and he's honestly one of the best parts of this game. I was so invested in the story the entire time, and I think he's a big reason why. More like a nightmare. 
I was a hard guy for the Cloak and Dagger boys up in Ottawa. Not really an agent. More like the guy who cleans up. And just like the handheld version, there's stealth attacks and you're able to retract your claws to gain health. The rage meter is here too, and this time around it can be filled by using your fist too. It just doesn't fill as fast as it would had you used your claws. Combat is pretty basic. There's a punch and kick button. You can either block or jump over enemies, and depending on where you're positioned on the screen, you can do what's called a strike move. These moves are fun to pull off and look really cool, but by the end of the playthrough, I got really tired of them. Enemies aren't really that hard to deal with, but as you progress, the amount of enemies on the screen can be overwhelming. Towards the end of the game, combat pretty much just boiled down to me trying to position myself to pull off these strike moves until there's one or two enemies left, and it did get a little repetitive. There's two main enemy types throughout the game. The regular soldiers will try to fight you barehanded or with batons, and the regular soldiers with some type of gun. There are a few more enemy types sprinkled throughout the game, but for 70% of the game, these are the main enemies that you're going to encounter. And the biggest start of them all are the ones with the guns. It's insane how much damage these guys do, and there are some areas where it's just these guys. No cover, no way to sneak behind them, you're just thrown right in front of them, and you just kind of have to hope that you can kill them fast enough. Hitting them will make them drop their weapon, but most of the time if there's a group, it won't even matter, because it'll be gunned down before you even make it to the next person. And honestly, the only reason why I bring up these guys is because of this level right here. Whoever designed this level loves to watch people suffer because this level was so painful it almost made me give up. You're locked in a room with these guys and the only way to leave the room is to kill each one of them. Now just for reference, this is what just one of them is capable of. So now imagine a group of them. And to add on to that, they also added turrets to this level that you also have to take out before being able to leave. I was stuck on this level for almost two hours and the worst part about it, every time I died I had to run back to this area. There's a lot of weird things about this game, but I did enjoy it. Looking at the reviews, a lot of people didn't like this one, but for the time it was made, and especially compared to some of the other games that were made around the same time, this is a solid game, just held up by some occasionally bad level design and sometimes really bad AI. I love the stealth in this game. If I had the option, I probably wouldn't want the entire game stealth, but sometimes it just doesn't work. I don't know if this was intentional, but if an enemy spots you and you manage to get away without being seen, the game just doesn't let you go back into a stealth kill on that enemy, and sometimes stealth doesn't work at all, even if you haven't been spotted. For a lot of these superhero games, the first attempt at 3D is always a little messy. Not everybody can be like Spider-Man. Batman was rough, Superman was really rough, and Aquaman was yikes. I don't even have words for that game, but this game is a solid 6.5, which for a first attempt is not bad at all. Now if you clicked on this video, you may already know about this game. It started off very underappreciated, but over the years everyone's come to realize that this is actually a good game. I'm not going to talk about this game too much because I feel like I can't really say anything that hasn't already been said. I watched bits and pieces of some other people's impressions of the game, so I wasn't expecting a good game, but I was completely blown away. This isn't just a good game, this is honestly up there for one of the best superhero games I've ever played, and that's not even an exaggeration. I'm about to have an IGN moment, but this game really does make you feel like Wolverine. The game was just a giant power trip. Compared to the other Marvel characters, the Wolverine comics have always been a lot more graphic. He can be a really violent person, the game captures that perfectly. Combat is pretty basic, you have light attacks and heavy attacks that can chain to create combos, and a grab button, which is honestly my favorite thing to do. There's also a few different specials, and literally everything can be chained together. They don't restrict you at all with the combat, so if you want, you can combo two heavy attacks and end it with the grab, or spam light attacks and chain it with a special attack. It's literally whatever you want. And the combos in this game are insane to look at. You're literally ripping enemies apart with your attacks. Of all the hack and slash games I've played, this one is definitely my favorite. I'll occasionally replay a game if I really liked it, but normally it's not until months after I finish it that I go back to replay it. But as soon as the credits roll for this game, I immediately hop back in to replay it. This game is that good. The only bad thing that I have to say about this game is that it was a little too easy. I died a total of three times on my first playthrough, and it was only because I was still learning the controls. I can't stress this enough, if you like hack and slash games, you need to play this game. It is a little hard to find, and you're going to pay almost the same price as a new PS5 game for an Xbox 360 copy, but honestly, it's 100% worth it. And now, let's talk about the very last Wolverine game. Most of you guys already know, but Insomniac, the guys behind the Spider-Man games, are working on a Wolverine game next. And before I end the video, I just want to talk about what I would want from that game. We haven't really been given too much information about the game yet, but it has been leaked a few times. There's even a playable version out there that got leaked that anybody could download on their PC right now. I haven't seen any of the gameplay, I don't want to see it. This is a game that I'm really excited for, Insomniac never misses when it comes to the games, and I want to see it when it's ready to be played, but with that being said, for the people that have seen the leaks, I may or may not mention something that's already in the game. My biggest fear with Insomniac Wolverine is that it's going to play like a Spider-Man game and not a Wolverine game. 
I have a feeling that the combat system is going to be very identical to Spider-Man, and that's not really a bad thing. Spider-Man is a lot of fun, and maybe it's because I've been spoiled with Origins, but I'm really hoping that we get more than just mash square and dodge. One of the best things about Origins is how brutal Wolverine is. Spider-Man is known for pulling his punches, Wolverine isn't, and I hope that they do a good job of showcasing that in the gameplay. It's Insomniac, so I'm pretty sure Stealth is already going to be a part of the game, but I'm hoping that's like Wolverine's Revenge where you can smell certain enemies and see footsteps. I also really want them to bring back the ability to retract your claws from Wolverine's Revenge. I really like the idea of having a different moveset and being able to regenerate when you're just using your fist. It could also be a thing where it's part of the difficulty. Say you play on easy, they can maybe do a thing where enemies are easier and you regenerate health, whether your claws are retracted or not, and harder difficulties can make the regeneration time a little longer. Either way, like I said, Insomniac never misses when it comes to the games, and no matter what they do, it's going to turn out good. I'm not worried about it being bad, but I am excited for it when it drops sometime next year.